Good morning and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent as we gather together to praise God, as we celebrate the coming of Christ our King, and as we wait just four more days till we gather together for Christmas Eve. If you are joining us for worship, we are so glad that you're here. Whether you've been worshiping with Bologna United Methodist Church for a few minutes, a few years, or decades, you are welcome in this place, and God meets you where you are. I do want to let you know that in the comment section, the bulletin has been posted, so you can follow along there with us, and you can put comments in the comment section, letting us know about prayer requests you have, but also just sharing with others in our congregation the joys of this service. So we hope that you will be sure to interact with one another and with us. I do want to let you know that tonight is our Lessons and Carol service, where many, many people in our congregation have offered their gifts of music and their gifts of um, singing with us today. They also, we have many people who share their voices with us to read scriptures, and so we are so glad to have that service. It starts at 7 p.m. tonight on Facebook and YouTube, but of course you can catch it anytime after that as well, and we hope you'll share it with others. I do want to remind you that on Christmas Eve, our plan, our deepest desire is to gather outside in the parking lot so that everybody can be together in the safety and warmth of their cars. We do know that that decision is dependent on the weather, so we'll be keeping an eye on the weather this week, and we'll let you know by Tuesday about what will be happening with the service. That way, you'll be sure to have your communion and candlelight. But we do hope we'll be gathering at 6 p.m. in the parking lot. You can arrive starting at 5.15 p.m. and it will be a beautiful way for us to gather together. As we prepare our hearts and begin worship, I invite Clint Johnson up at this time to help with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Again, the responses for the Advent wreath lighting are found in your bulletin that is available in the comment section online. Friends of peace, reveal yourself to us today. We need peace in our lives, our homes, our families, our church, and our whole world. Help us to slow down and seek out the peace you provide, so we may become peacemakers for ourselves and others. Today we light the candle of peace, reminding us that God's greatest desire in our lives and world is that we might find peace on earth. Let us pray together. Prince of peace, come into our lives. Bring your peace and teach us how to be light in the darkness. Amen.
Today, our first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23, when Jesus appears to the disciples after he has been resurrected. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? O holy God of promise, we so often place our trust in the things we can see and touch and easily believe. But you do not ask us to believe what is easy. You have asked us to believe what is true. Forgive us, Holy One, when we doubt the ways you work. Forgive us when we find it hard to believe in ancient stories. Forgive us when we question how you choose to enter the world born as one of us. Help us to believe in the promise revealed in Christ our Savior, the one who came to set us all free. And write our hearts so that we might open them up to the promises you will continue to fulfill in our lives as the world and, and, and of find our world this season. As we celebrate our Lord, who is the Prince of Peace, help us to envision your dreams, O oh God, that we find so that we might bring about a world of peace where enemies are reconciled and all can live and work and play safely without fear, where the poor and powerless find justice. We remember God's promise that he would send a ruler of peace, filled with the Spirit of God, of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, and we eagerly await the coming of this king. And we pick up this mantle, knowing that we too are bringers of peace, for we are actively working to bring about the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. As people seeking after you, the Prince of Peace, we pray the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
we've been in the book of Isaiah for a while throughout Advent, and we have been looking at um, this promise from Isaiah that a king would come. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he would be mighty counselor, or wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And so, as we enter into this passage in Isaiah chapter 11, we hear again about this Prince of Peace and the kingdom that would be coming. And so I invite you to hear these words. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or by what his ears hear. But what righteousness he shall judge, with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be his belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we ask that you would come upon us wherever we are, that your spirit might move in our hearts and in our minds, that we might truly seek to be people who follow the Prince of Peace and who offer your peace in the world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. It begins in the darkness. A seed burst forth from the soil only after it has been safely tucked away in the depths of the dirt. New life enters the world only after it has been nourished in the darkness of the womb. Advent, a season of waiting and preparation, comes to us in the winter, in the darkness that sets in in late afternoon, in the cold winds that sweep across our faces, in the bare trees that have shed their leaves for the winter. A shoot, a sign of life, shall come from a stump that has been cut off and destroyed. This is what Isaiah tells us. Out of darkness, out of death, out of desolation, new beginnings come. New visions emerge. For so long we've been taught to fear the dark. To fear what we don't know. To avoid the mess and chaos around us. And yet, maybe we've been taught wrong. What if instead we are called to dwell in the darkness, knowing that light has come and light will come again. Goodness will come out of this time where we are called to prepare and wait for Christ in these dark days. I have found myself clinging to these promises as we begin this final week of Advent, and I want to invite you to cling to these promises too. Promises that peace come from the chaos, Promises that new life begins in the dark. Promises that righteousness and truth prevail over ruthlessness and division. And I want to invite you to cling to these promises with me. For Isaiah invites us into a new vision that begins with a tree stump. And yet leads to life. This life looks different than anything we've known or seen before. It begins with a Savior who will rule in ways that can only come to fruition because of the Spirit of God that will be placed upon his shoulders. He will not rule with the authority of a mighty king, not speaking in brash tones or flexing his mighty muscles. He will be one of righteousness and truth, gentle yet just. 
He will bring into fruition a peaceful kingdom where all creation gathers together. Where animals and people don't just survive, but thrive. Where they laugh and dance and find their whole selves welcomed into the fold, knowing that no one else is a threat to them. And that they are not too weak or too different or too poor to be present in God's kingdom. This vision brings us to our final name for the Messiah found, as I mentioned, in Isaiah 9, verse 6. So far, we've looked at Jesus' role as the wonderful counselor and mighty God. We proclaim the way he is a part of the everlasting Father's kingdom, and now we arrive at the Prince of Peace, a designation we certainly hold on to in these days. Here in this chapter of Isaiah, we hear exactly what the vision of peace looks like in our lives and in our world. It describes a world that seems so far away, yet so possible. If we just put hope and love, joy and peace first and forefront in our lives. And that is why God spoke through the prophets, who declare God's word and speak into the space between our world as it is today and our world as it should be. This vision begins in the chaos. Prophets tend to start their message by calling us to notice the mess around us. When our eyes are opened, when we really see the mess that we have helped create, then maybe we'll be ready to open our hearts to something better, to the way of God. This is what Isaiah is calling the Israelites to do. When he spoke these words to the Israelites, they were fearing for their lives in a time of military and political turmoil. The mighty Babylonian army was marching towards them, crushing city after city, and soon it would be their turn to face the Babylonians as they waited at the gate of Jerusalem. Isaiah looked around at the people he had been called to encourage and challenge, people called to be a witness to God and a blessing to the world. And he was met with the messes that they had created in their own lives, the darkness they had entered into. And he was there to offer them a word of hope, a word of transformation, a new way to see the world in the midst of the destruction they experienced and the desolation they felt. He pointed to the beginning of something new as a shoot comes from a stump, as people turn to glorify God by caring more about the poor than the powerful, by welcoming all rather than settling into the demarcation of us versus them. And as people begin to see with their hearts rather than their eyes or their ears. For this is what God's vision calls the Messiah to do. And this is the vision we are called to be enraptured in. A vision of peace that knows no end. I'll admit that all sounds lovely, and we may be tempted to just sit back in our chairs and be content to let God do all the work, to let God bring about this kind of peace. The promise is here. Of course, God has given us this promise, so won't he do it? A shoot from Jesse, which is the line of David, where we have been promised the king or Messiah would come from. God get to work, we might think. But this vision of peace that was inaugurated by the Messiah, the vision of peace spoken through the lips of Isaiah, calls all of creation to participate. We are to work alongside the Prince of Peace as peacemakers. We are called to be people who bring about the kingdom of God, yet we too often have been peacekeepers rather than peacemakers. When we act as peacekeepers, we spend our time maintaining the status quo, trying to to quell the conflict that might be arising in our lives or our world, hoping that no one will disrupt the systems and institutions as they are. Peacekeeping keeps the powerful in control. Yet as peacemakers, those who Jesus says will be called children of God in the Beatitudes, we understand that we have to actively seek to make a path for the righteous, for the downtrodden, for the poor and afflicted, we turn and face God and work with all of our might to bring about the kingdom of heaven. And we realize when we're being peacemakers that sometimes the world needs a little chaos and needs a little disruption to bring about new life and justice. And to do that, to be peacemakers, 
We have to be willing to face the darkness in our world and in our lives. And to confess when we have been peacekeepers rather than peacemakers. We have to be willing to confess the times we have oppressed others. We have to be willing to confess the times when we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves and we have been so comfortable with the people we surround ourselves that we miss out on the neighbor in need. We confess that while we live comfortably with not only life's necessities, but the excess we enjoy, that the peaceable kingdom is far from here if others go without shelter and food and clothes. We have not yet fully seen with God's eyes or fully heard with God's ears. We have not turned our hearts to the one who seeks the wisdom and understanding, the counsel and might, the knowledge of the Lord. And so in this Advent season, we are called to reorient ourselves towards God so that the way of peacemaking becomes our guide out of whatever darkness we find ourselves in. My friend Lindsay, who went to seminary in Boston with me, shared with me recently as we were reflecting on our time there that during December, Christmas lights on homes and buildings became so important to her. The sun sets even earlier there than it does here at 4 p.m. if the dark of night began to set in. But she said that as she'd walk home, she felt that just a little bit of light, those Christmas lights on buildings and homes, helped to push back the darkness a little bit at a time. Of course, she meant the literal darkness of the night, but I imagine that darkness also gave her the darkness in her own life that needed to be pushed back. I love that idea. The idea that our calling as we seek peace and hold on to hope that Isaiah proclaims is to be people who push back the darkness a little at a time. As you get swept up in all that the holiday season has brought with it, you're invited to sit in the quiet, to sit in the dark, and ponder the ways you see mess and chaos. But also ponder the ways you can push it back. Ponder the ways you can see the world with God's eyes and trust the that God is at work through you as a peacemaker. Because there you will find the little bit of light you need to shine brighter, or the little bit of light you need to shine on others. There you will see that peace is possible. Maybe you'll see God's work in the world through the ways we supported Methodist Family Health and Harbor Home this season, trusting that we're pushing back the darkness in others' lives. Maybe you'll experience God's peace as you drive around town looking at Christmas lights, noticing how they push back the darkness even here around you. Maybe it's in seeing through the eyes of a child. In the peaceful kingdom, it's the little child that leads them. Don't try to control the chaos that comes with children enjoying the Christmas spirit. Watch their awe as they take in the Christmas tree. Notice how they make a mess while they're making Christmas candy or cookies. Look for a new beginning to offer hope to someone grieving or sick. Look for hope to celebrate a new baby on its way, or to find creative ways to engage with those we are now physically distanced from. And know that in God's peaceable kingdom, the one we're helping to bring along, peace reigns only when we act in a way where there are no divides, no one more powerful than another, no one who doesn't deserve the love of God and hope in our lives. This is the vision of God and the Prince of Peace who guides us on our way. We hold out this vision as we long for hope and peace. Hope and peace that emerges as tiny tendrils in the unexpected places. Even now, God is nurturing the growth of something new and good in our darkness. In places that look dead and discarded in our lives and our world. Go and push back the darkness. Shine the light. God's peaceable kingdom is coming. Amen. As we give thanks for the ways that God empowers us to be light in the world, one of those ways is through the giving we do for our congregation. I want to thank again all those who have offered their gifts, especially in this Advent season, through blessings and carols, through helping us to do online worship. So many people are giving not just of monetary gifts, but of their presence and their prayers and the special gifts of um, leadership and 
other talents that God has given them. And so we give thanks for that. But we also give thanks for the way people offer their tithes and offerings. So we want to remind you that you can do that by sending a check to the church, by dropping one by during the office hours, or by clicking on the Shop Now button on Facebook, which will take you to our PayPal online giving page. We truly believe that God is at work in this place, and we trust the ways God will continue to move in our lives. Let us pray. We thank you, Holy One, for all your good gifts. In this season, we give thanks, especially for the gifts of prophecy and promise and calls for preparation. As a thankful response to these gifts, we offer our belief, our commitments, and our financial gifts, that we may hasten the time when your peaceful kingdom will come to fruition, and no one will seek to hurt or destroy on all of God's holy mountain. Amen. Please join in affirming our faith as it is written in the Old and New Testaments. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Service. 
I mentioned many times, but so many people helped to make that service come together. So many people offered their gifts to us, but I want to especially thank Sarah and Jeremy for all of their help and the ways that they have organized this Lessons in Carol service and accompanied many of our singers, so thank you all for that as well. I want to let you know that next Sunday, the 27th, the Sunday after Christmas Eve, we will have a service that is put together by me along with the bishop. It, he is offering a service for United Methodists all across Arkansas. It will be a great opportunity, again, for us to be able to worship with other United Methodists to hear a word from the bishop and to get to um, gather together in that way. So know that that's coming on December 27th. Friends, as we go from this place, might we truly meditate on what it means to be peacemakers and not just peacekeepers. May we not be afraid always of chaos or darkness, but to know that good things come from there. A little bit of light slips in and lightens up the darkness. That a little bit of joy comes in and pushes back the darkness. No matter what, know that God is with you as you seek to be peacemakers in the world. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>